Camera's on. Yo. Yo, everybody. It's a little crazy. This, yeah, we on. Ladies and gentlemen, you can hear all these savages in the background. It's going down over here. It is going crazy. Um, ladies and gentlemen, today uh, is a uh, show we're doing the uh, memorial to uh gentleman from the neighborhood Julio Lugo. mr julio lugo um with what's the name of the place iron horse lone star we're at lone star lone star and bay ridge which as you can hear this place right now had a good turnout very good turnout very good turnout so right now the the study name off some of the guys that are here with us today uh, we got Mike Rodriguez, John Rodriguez, Amarillo, I mean, C, uh, Chris, Mo Ballard, Paco, Alexis Zapata, Herman Sanchez, uh, Carlos Flores, Charles, um, Andre, Arias, wow. uh, DJ, Alex Oates. Jesus Christ. Here, this is really, really crazy right now. My man Wormy's in the building. Wormy's Big the Worm from Sunset Park. Let's go. Um, so we're in the Lone Star Cafe, and uh, we have a bunch of, of players um, from across New York City, guys that have played together, um, and they're here to pay their respects to uh, their brother and comrade on the field, Julio Lugo. Um, we're going to get them started up again, but right now um, we're just trying to get things settled. Yeah, we got um, Julio's, Julio's uh, family also from Sunset Park here. Over so here? I think Raph, um, Papo has something written down. He wants to speak to them about it. Okay, okay. Yo, whenever, whenever, whenever he's ready. Whenever he's ready. He, he's him. <laughs> he's him. Yo, I want to thank everyone that's here today. Celebrating Julio Lugo's life, his legacy. I want to especially thank Sully and Mr. A for helping me put this memorial together. I'd like to send my most heartfelt condolences to Julio Lugo's family, wife, children, parents, and his brother Rudy. My heart was broken when I heard of his loss. Julio was like a son to me. I am still in disbelief, as I know many of us here today are. Hearing of his loss was extremely painful, and not being able to say goodbye was heartbreaking. I personally have nothing but fond memories. He was just 17 when I met him. Grief can be so hard, but our special memories can help us cope. So being here together today is for all of us who loved and remembered and will never forget Julio. Thank you. Yo, for you guys who don't know me, I'm Mike. Mike Rodriguez. No, he's good. I picked him up. Okay. Hey, you good, Mike. You good. And I'm just going to piggyback on what he said, and then I see some stuff in Spanish. Um, this is not a good reason to meet up, guys. Like, y'all all brothers, we're all brothers. We all grew up together. We all went to those battles that DJ, Papo, Richie put us through, including Rudy and <clears throat> and Julio. But we, this, is, this is not a good reason to meet up. Like, we're, we're too close of a Nick family. This shows it exactly why we need to meet up, because we don't know when something like this this tragic is going to happen. Um, basically, we're here to give respeto a, a, a Julio eh, voy a tratar de, de decir lo que dije en, en inglés en español pero no, si no me sale bien me necesita ayuda básicamente nosotros eh, somos un grupo que crecimos todos juntos que tuvimos muchas batallas como, como niños como peloteros, como humanos y somos un, un grupo muy 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 cercano que una tragedia así nos trae nosotros juntos que no debe ser así Nosotros estamos en un lugar que nosotros podemos, a lo mejor, podemos vernos un poco más, con más, a menudo, a menudo con más a menudo para, para compartir esto, lo que estamos compartiendo ahora. So, I'm going to go back to English. Um, 
the other thing is like I spoke to Rudy uh, to Julio Thursday prior to him passing, and and all he all, all Rudy all Julio was was just the same person. He never changed, man. He never changed. He was the same guy to play Los Amor La misma persona. He'll give you a shirt off his back. All he talked about was his family, and he talked about crazy enough. He would talk about all of us, all our memories. And, and our last conversation was about our memories and how we we're going to get together and share these memories. So this is a perfect example of something we should do. Um, you guys that were around, usted que estaba con, con Julio sabe que él nunca cambió. La misma persona siempre. Nunca cambió quien fue y, y nunca eh, me trataba diferente. La última conversación que tuve yo con él fue el jueves antes de, de, de lo que él pasó y me estaba hablando. De, algo así, igual. ¿verdad? Que nosotros podamos compartir Como, como amigos entre todos y que no sea que no sea tan un fake solo que no sea tanto tiempo para vernos y hacernos planes para vernos en el verano para compartir y esto es una una un, como una un, una ¿qué te como, una reunión como una reunión para bueno to to come come out with him eso para darle memoria a él so muchas gracias a todos thanks for coming Yo, let's just share memories, Joe. Thank Love you, brother. Yeah. Love you, Mike. Love you, So as you heard, we just we just had a, a family and friends speak on Julio's behalf. Um, as you said, there's a bunch of players in here that are that are legends, right? Yes. And have been playing for years, and it's crazy to have them all in the same room. You know, under these conditions, it's it's not a beautiful thing, you know, but I think this speaks to what we've all been going through in a way, right? Yeah, it, it's something that we always speak about. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we get to see each other at bad times. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we don't get in touch with us, um, friends and families, and we go to a funeral or you know, something like that's how we stay in touch with each other. So basically, Mike and you know, Pablo are saying that. Uh, you know, let's try to do this more often. Uh, you know, negative. Uh, of the For sure. Man, I, I, I can't get over the fact of how many people I'm seeing in here. Familiar faces. Oh. Is some shit about the pop up? <laughs> I was like, damn, it just started. Is already going to start? <laughs> yeah. So, Sally, why don't you tell the, the I people? doing these in my thumb, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. Why don't you tell um? Why don't you tell the, the audience like your connection to Julio? Like, how did that happen? Like, how did it come about? Well, I met Julio out in high school. Uh -huh. <laughs> You know, quiet, didn't really know he really wanted to play organized sports and still and he came on the team. He was, you know, like like Mike said, he never changed. He treated us the same way after you know winning his rings or whatever it was, he was the same guy. So oh, yeah. yeah. He's a great dude. He really was a guy that you know sometimes misunderstood, but not a guy like not a problem guy and always about you know you know what's crazy is we're, we're doing this first time live event uh put the camera on somebody speaking listen right now they stuck us in a fucking corner yeah <laughs> we're supposed to be outside and heat. yeah we're supposed to be outside and have heat but there was only one of us handling the logistics so you know it's a little tough right now but we're going to bring want to call, uh, people want to in as we go on. And as you can hear, Sunny doesn't care that we're live. He's just fucking talking okay. over me. It don't matter. They're not going to hear him, though. They're going to just be here. <laughs> yeah. If Mel calls, then it's just going to be. Yeah. Give him a he'll, he'll give you a number. Mel can call here. And then. All right. Then Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to have a live caller call in. Um, so everybody couldn't, couldn't, you know, take part. You ready? You ready? You ready? I can give you the number. Nine seven yeah yeah it's on youtube uh the set uh the set 6145 yep so this is some real run and gun shit right now 
we were supposed to have two cameras set up. We, we were supposed to have our backdrop, but you know, we got Julio up here. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're making the best of this situation. It's just on the fly learning. Yeah, for real. We we got a great fucking group of people in here right now. If you guys, it, everybody watching, if you were here in the room and to feel the energy of all these dudes coming together. You should have set my camera up facing them, man. You, you want to set it up? I mean, I mean we, I could, listen. Yeah, but it might work. I mean, whatever, it doesn't matter. I love the last minute idea. Yeah, I just thought <laughs> you, of it right yeah, now. You know what's crazy, though? Look at the way the fuck was. I know. You know if people, if, if this looks comfortable or whatever, it's not. <laughs> this shit is like on the fly, you like... Good. But, but we're still making That's it happen. It. For First real. time live, live, live. Yeah. Live. So, and we're drinking alcohol. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, cheers. 49 years. New Year's coming, baby. Mm -hmm. JJ. Who? Who? Mel's going to call in, and then you come you on. You see what I'm saying? It's the live factor. Sally doesn't say it. Yo, uh, shout out to Anthony Montenegro, man. I hope you're feeling better. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. I, I, I read his post, and I was like, wow, shit threw me yeah, for a loop, I texted him the other day. Yeah. So, yeah, hopefully he was home. You gotta take care. Of, be ready for little man. You gotta get, get the body right. Oh yeah, man. Take care of yourself, uh, Ebro. Uh, salute to Joe Martinez, Jose Kike Ramos, uh, Lisa Lazaro. Wormy, uh, you're in here, so I'm not gonna say nothing to you. But um, <clears throat> we're gonna have a call. Who's calling in? No. Tell me the number again. Uh, hold on a second. Nine nine seven three nine seven three seven six five seven six five six two four seven. It's on the ticket. Yeah. Who's this dude calling in? So now the organization of Peace uh -huh. so, you know, it's the one that forever. Okay. That's like uh, a lot of these dudes dad. Who uh oh yeah? Okay. Oh, he's been playing with us since young. Yeah. Who do you think is gonna be our first guest? JJ's gonna, JJ's gonna come in. All right. We just gotta make sure it don't knock shit down. So uh evidently we're gonna have JJ Rodriguez come in. Uh World Series winner. Uh great guy. He was on the show before, he's in the building. And there's like so many fucking personalities in here, man. It, it's really a, a, a great turnout. Everybody's showing a lot of love. Um, salute to the big sis, Millie Mill. Big P, Paul Lopez. On, we see you, brother. Of course, of course, and so David um, Caldwell. I didn't know if I mentioned David Caldwell was in the building. Oh shit! Uh, DC looking like Michael Jordan. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, we got a good turnout. So did, did, did he go to Fort? Oh, DC. No, Lugo. Lugo went to Fort. Yeah, he played really? with me in Fort Anderson. Uh, I think I seen him. Yeah. He, he played in the Lincoln game. No, right? Uh, no. No, no, that was my sophomore year. So was, uh, that was 89. I don't want to date it. 89. <laughs> He's showing another up. Another number. Age. <laughs> another one. Yeah, so uh, we got a gentleman calling in. Uh, we have a bunch of players in the building. I mean, there's so many people here. You know, guys are reminiscing. They're comparing how, how much hair they got left. A lot of gray hair in the building. Gray and ball, gray and ball, gray and ball. We need a sponsorship from fucking um, just for men, just for men and hymns. Yeah, hymns is coming up right now. Right. Them, them and blue chew, and get the wipes. Yo, you see that shit? Smells like a lot of Bengay in here right now. Bengay and obsession. They're like, we can still play. I'm like, no, no, we can't. Can. no, we can't. No, your man, um. So he has a friend here that looks like Michael Jordan. So I'm talking to him, and he's like, all the guys that he played against, their sons are in the majors right now. Huh? Yeah, it'll, it's going to come through the board because the USB is connected. So, uh, so yeah, he was telling me how all the guys he's played against, his their sons are in the majors now. And he's like, yeah, Fernando Tatis Jr. Yeah. So I played against Fernando Tatis. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Mm. So he played it for one year, two years, two years, and then when, maybe three years, but two years that I know. And, and where did he go from there? And he went to College State. 
uh, in Oklahoma. Okay. And then uh, I believe he was drafted by the Astros. Okay. He was drafted by the Astros. And then he worked his way up the circuit to the major leagues for the Astros. And then, you know, he bounced around. Yeah, we're to see too. Oh, 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 there you go. Ashley right there. Oh, shit. Yeah, Wild Young. Red Sox, Cardinals. So, tremendous career. Yeah, short, you know, like the. Uh, one of him and his brother, uh, you know, the only two that ever faced each other, his brother Rudy Lugo pitched against him in the major league game. Really? So I think that's like one of the times that ever happened. Did he so, hit him? He hit him like a deep fly ball, but Rudy got him out. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, who was who was older, younger? Julio's older. Julio's older. Yeah. So he was like, "Yeah, I got your ass." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm too old. For yeah. You. Rudy posted a video the other day where like it's in Boston. He throws and Julio hits the ball, and everybody's like, "They think it's like a home run." Uh-huh. See Rudy walking up around like, yeah, I got him. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's a special moment they had. For sure. And again, like, like, uh, we had uh, guys on the show say that uh, he never changed. You know, I, I remember seeing him at Yankee Stadium and giving him the, you know, and he's like, come see me after, you know, like, come, come down. And he always, always show up. I think it's important. I mean, you know, see, we got guys here that are in the room that have, like, a, <laughs> and they go through. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the internet. Th- this is the. This, no, no, no. It has nothing to do with that. Look. Saca el número aquí, mi amigo. Mira, 973. Yeah, that's what I told him to call. Yeah, tell him to call that. We've had people call him before. Yo, so, test the line. You want to test the line? Just to make sure for argument's sake. Um, the the amount of experience in the room of people who played in the majors or have worked, as Sully said, the circuit, there's like, forget about it, there's at least 80 years of experience in here, and, and these guys are regular, you know. For me, I'm calling right now. I didn't even hear anything. Nah, hang it up. You gotta maybe you gotta connect it through there. It's connected already. Oh, I don't Bluetooth know. is connected. Let me try it. <laughs> See if you can call Mel directly. See if it comes on there. Well, there you go. Give me his number. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're trying to call, have a call. Right. Into so right now, what's the gentleman's name? Mel Zitter. Mel Zitter? See if we get Mel Zitter on the line. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Hello? Hello? The Bluetooth Hello, is making something myself. Mel. Hold on a second. Oh, you hung up. You hearing that though? It's connected for calls and audio. Let me just It's not gonna come through here. Let me try him again. Yeah, Mel, he's trying to call you. Talk about talk about fucking live problems. But I'm not we need a producer. We need a producer for the live episodes. So. It's all good. Listen, we got people in the room watching. I hope you guys enjoy the games out there. Um, hope you guys won. Okay, hold on. You made the best right but, um, Hang up and he's trying to call you. We're trying to figure this out live um, on the fly. We're at Lone Star, Lone Star Bar and Grill, guys. 87th Street and 5th Avenue. Anybody around, you want to come hang out, have a drink, and uh, see what happens. Yeah. Got guys from the Bronx here. We got guys from Florida, from, Te- from Louisiana. We got guys from all over. Let's get together. We got to respect the effort. 
See the goat behind me? Aaron Rodgers. Your phone's getting signal? Yes. Look at I that. Just heard it you just heard it, right? Hold on. I just heard it hang up. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the fun part about running a live show. You need the Verizon guy. You need the Verizon guy. Yeah. Can you hear me now? There we go. We got it. Now. now tell everybody, shut the fuck up right now. Mel. Mel. Yeah. Hey, Mel Zilla, we have you all live on the, the live stream. Okay. Can you hear us? I'm right here, I think. All right. Okay. So, so Mel, um, you know, I know this is a somber time for all of us. You know, it, you know, we're, we're remembering you, uh, Mr. Lugo, right now, and um, we just wanted to know if you had any, uh, any, like, one of your favorite memories or, or something you would like to share with the show to talk about Julio Lugo and his character as a player. Can you hear him when the signal's in and out? <laughs> yeah, I don't hear Mel, you still with us? I'm here. Okay. All did right. Did you hear the question? Mel, did you no. hear it? Yeah, did you hear us? I hear you, but right now it's very loud on the side. Okay. Well, let me let me try it one more time. After this guy kicks the camera over and gets kicked out of the bar, <laughs> Michael Jordan looking at. All right. Um, so is there something that you would like to share with the audience on the show uh, regarding uh, who Julio was and his ca speaking to his character, who he was as a player and as a friend? Six one four five. I want to be a big every. What's that? I'd like to speak to everyone there. Oh, it's not going to be able to speak to everyone because <laughs> yeah. it's through the cat. Everybody's watching it on their phone. Yeah, they're Mel. watching it on their phone. They're watching it on their recorded. phone. They're waiting for you to talk. Yeah. It's live. It's a live broadcast. I know. We're here, Mel. Yeah, when can I speak? You're, we're waiting on you, Mel. Whenever you're ready, buddy. Okay. I smell bitter. We're listening. I just wanted to have it. Sorry, I could not make it. I want to want to pull your story. My heart goes out to the Google family, especially some, especially the way it happened. We need forty-five. Yeah. My first memory of Julio, any kid who wanted to play ball, dying to play. Morgan played better in that. When he played for the second year, he started to become a Oh, and from played in Johnstown, 1994. I have a very, very strong memory of him coming on the field with the rest of the players. They were all yelling at him. And I was in a booth at the time. Yeah, but we had a We had bigger hearts than me. I was in what happened in the game for that out. You have this, you don't. I always remember that. Then having who then having Rudy come up to the bridge. I know Rudy Pippi, I was very close with him. And my never to Rudy. I'm just so sorry I could not 
Now, we're having a little trouble with the connection, but we heard you. Um, we wish you all the best for the new year, health-wise and family-wise, all the best. Looking forward. The guys here are really thinking of you, and they miss you, and they wish you all the best, Mel. Thanks, Mel. Huh? Well, as you can see, His connection's back. taking the call aside, the bar is back. Yo, let's give it up for... For our brother Lugo, let's give it up. JJ. JJ. Where's JJ at? JJ. Look, he JJ. act he acting extra funny now because he got his ring on. You see, right? He's walking around like this. Yo, what's up? It's the ring. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna we're gonna welcome in the champ. Just give it a second. Musical sec. chairs. Musical yeah, chairs. yeah, yeah. So you know what? You're gonna interview him. Because I don't want to, I don't want to, it's a little jungle gym of shit. Back, back, see the guy, put, put these headphones on. No, I even need to. Sit over there, he's not going to do it. Ah! Pa, 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 na, which is the pa, 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 na. He said, hey, he said, what's up? Yeah, I know. He said, what's up, man? Yeah, who you? He said, what's up? He must have slapped you in your head. Yeah, he was like, yo, what's up, dog? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you can hear everybody. I don't know who set this up. That's what I said. Right. No, Somebody no was talking about back, me over right? there. Don't lean back. Yeah, shit, hold, up. hold up a second. All right, this is your moment, kid. Yo, I can hear everybody. I can hear Mike yeah. talking shit right now. Well, she <laughs> yeah, he said you wasn't on that. Yeah, 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 I heard him. I heard him. Why you gotta bring me in? <laughs> <laughs> I can hear you. So, I'm a, um, a piggyback, JJ. I'm a piggyback of what Mike said earlier. You know, it's unfortunate we all kind of see each other in these um negative times, right? Like, we, like it's kind of like something bad happens, and this is how we meet. It happens in our, our, our personal life too, with family and friends. So, but what we hear, we make the best of it. You know what I mean? We're, we're here to remember the good times. So what are you what are your good times with, with, with Julio? Like playing travel ball, right? Is that when you first met Julio? Yeah. Uh new service. Um, it's just crazy. Like I have so many memories, like just trying to put it all together and just yeah. thinking about all the fun times, you know, even even the bad times were memorable, you know. Uh, just to use service times, really, you know, getting there, trying to like, like the all right, bad times. We having to get there early when it was rain, when it was raining the night before. Right. Yeah, having to hold the, 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 the field, you know, and it was like pump that snow? water. Yeah, snow, everything. It was, but he was one of the guys that pushed everybody to get better. Right. You know, like he hated losing. We all hated losing, but right. I felt like for him, even like me, like we were always there. Right. It was like two alphas, yeah. making sure that you know shit, shit was right. You know, but he had that he had that thing about him where he didn't want to look bad. Right. He was, you see, he was always trying to be that pretty boy motherfucker too. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so he he was, he was a silent assassin though too, because he wasn't a man in many words. No, no, but it was like, let's get busy. We gotta, you know, it's time to rock out. Like with him, like especially on the field, like when was in Johnstown, like there'll be like guys on other teams talking shit to him, and he'll go, he'll look at me and go, Jay, and then I will have to go get that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> it was, Sending the goons. Yeah, yeah, I used yeah. to be that goon too yeah, in high school. Wait a minute. Yeah, right, Jay. It's like yo, Jay. Because back then, like, he, he knew English, but it was that no. broken. Yeah, yeah. So he felt like he couldn't, like, mm -hmm. verbalize, like, what he wanted mm -hmm. to say. So he always knew, like, I was always the clown. Right. But I always had everybody's back. And it was, especially with him. When we went to Connors, same thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just. Right. It was more of a fan. It was, yes, brotherhood, family, but. I felt like it was like blood. Right. You know? He 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 uh the thing about Julio is you could not not like him. Right? 
Sorry. Like he always smiling. He was always like, you know, like Mike said, he made it wherever, made his money, but he never treated anyone different. No, you know, and there's a lot of guys here in the room, yourself included, that have done that. So, you know, you guys are in the show now, right? Are you keeping in touch with them? Were you keeping in touch? And well, when I was, he was always in the National League when I was in America. And then when I went to St. Louis, he was in Boston. So it was like, we never, yeah, we never ever got to play with each other or play against each other. But yeah, we always kept in contact. I always kept in contact with everybody that yeah. was on our team. So, you know, to this day, we still do. But just, you know, just thinking about him and I still can't fathom because that he's not here. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like I'm expecting him to walk through the door right now and be like, psych. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like, I'm yeah. here. But, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. You know, time and, as time goes on, it's, you know, we'll heal, but things will still never be the yeah. same. It's it's I think things like this, like we said, is important. It's tough with the COVID and the times that we have, obviously. Yes, and all, but you know, we all have families. We all have families and lives. But but if if we can all take a day a year and make some, even in the summertime, yo, we're gonna do a fucking cookout. I think it's something that we should be done. Do you know, it should like be that, done. Sure. But uh, you know, we all have our lives and we all have you know responsibilities, obviously. But uh. You know, Julio, this is a great um, memorial for him. I know someone is asking me, how are you doing memorial so fast? And he was like, well, we didn't get the chance to say goodbye. He's his family. So, and some of his family is here, and we thank them for coming also. So, uh, you know, Jay, man, anything else you want to say before we, we let you go? You know, just everybody, you know, I love y'all. Get checked. You could be healthy. You could be fat, overweight. It don't matter. Sorry, Mr. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Sid, like, get checked. Well, it doesn't matter. Like, Julio, uh, Julio was... Yo, cut this bike off, man. <laughs> <laughs> Julio was, like, the healthiest dude I've ever met. Like, he was nice. always in the gym. Like, like I said, he was pushing us to get better. Yeah. Like, when we were in Johnstown, they were... Mike, hey, let me see. Talk yeah. Shit. Yeah. 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 Like, wait. No, he was right there. He wants, there he wants there to hang go. out. There you go. This dude right here, yeah, he we would have, story. we would have, yeah, we would have, I know, I'm not going to tell yeah. you secrets, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we would have push-up challenges and shit. Like, just, he'll knock on our door. Alexi, Jay, Mike, come out, hallway, push-up challenge, let's go. And we would just get it in, you know, and then we had that mentality of that killer instinct. Right. Yeah, so when we played... The Johnstown teams, or they counted us out from before we even got there. And then when they felt the wrath, then it was yeah. different. They were like, wait, these dudes is for real. No. You know, so it was. <laughs> oh, Leo. You know, it was, that's just him. That was just him. Yeah. Made you better. And. and any little way he tried, no yeah. matter what, to try to make you better. You know, it's funny. I played high school ball with Hugo before I let you go, JJ. Um, we played high school together. And I was more, you know, I was a senior, junior, senior. So we got a little swagger ready. But while I was thinking I was the shit, he was practicing and working. You know what I mean? And I always think about that. I said, damn, little man was pushing me, and I didn't even see that. You know? That's what it was. So, sure. It was the same way with everybody. Yeah, right? no. Push, push, push. Because sure. we never wanted anybody to feel left back. No. You know, like we had, we had our team. And we had nine guys, nine or ten guys out of that Johnson team. Sign. And everybody went to college. Everybody. So Mel did his thing. Yeah. And we just had Mel on, you know, I don't know if you heard the comment, but uh, is there any, you know, say anything to Mel before we let you go? Um, Mel, I love you, miss you, Rob. You know how I feel about you. You know, you like my city pops. You know, you did a lot for us. And, uh, you know, we 
can never, never be at, you know, saying thank you is not enough. Appreciation is not enough. You know, like I said, like I said not just my second battle, everybody else's second battle. Not from, you know, not just our team, but kids that were, you know, age 10, 11 to our 19 year olds. You know, but thank you. The bottom of my heart, my soul, thank you for, for whipping my ass. <laughs> My brother, love you, Jay. You already know what it is between us. JJ Rodriguez, guys. Sure. Yo, Richie. Yo. Yo, Mo, Mo, what you call Mo? Yeah, right Yo, Richie. Let's switch. I'm going to step out. Do, do Richie. Do Richie. Pause. Yeah, you know. Yo, you know it's live when people just get up from the set and just walk the fuck off. Damn, yeah. Sully's gonna go eat four glizzies right now. No buns. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, Richie, Richie. Richie, Richie. Richie, Richie. Richie, Richie. Richie, Richie. Richie All right, watch your steps sit in the all right, sorry, I can still rebound over him, though. As you can see, we're doing uh, we're doing something very wow. What the what's going on? Hey, what's that phone? Jay, what's going on? There goes my mic. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, this is very like on the fly. We have a a, a bunch of uh, different players here in the building. So tonight, uh, you just saw JJ Rodriguez, and now please introduce yourself. Hey, uh, people! Oh shit! It's great to have you here. Holy! Cow. This is Rich Corbo, and right now I'm following Mel Zero's legacy with you, sir. Wow. Just trying to uh, revive and resuscitate the uh, institution because that's what we are. 70 years of good baseball in Brooklyn. And wow. now we're moving into the, the other five bar. Okay. So you service, I, I believe, is your connection to, to our friend Lugo here, correct? Well, Julio came to me. I was already coaching. I had just come back from playing Pro Bowl. Okay. And Mel called me and said, look, you know, if you're doing nothing, come and coach with me. And so I had the 15-year-olds, Mel had the juniors, and Julio came to me at 14 and a half, 15 years old. Wow. And, and his talent, um, I'm assuming at that time, was already noticeable. Tremendous talent. The kid had hands, silky hands, really good arms, speed, and most of it, he had tremendous heart. He really, really loved the game. He respected the game more so than that, and he respected everyone around him. One of the things that he did for me as a coach was he inspired me. He motivated me to coach. And coach hard. He wouldn't let anyone get away with anything. He was the first one in, the last one out. You know, it's funny you say that because uh, we had JJ on the show who just walked off uh, incidentally. And um, one of the things that he pointed out to us about his work ethic and about those that were great around him was that usually the greats are the first ones in and the last ones out. You know, and to hear that about Julio, you know, it's, it's indicative of his character. It's telling about who he was. Well, the thing about it is that he loves the game so much that there was no time limitations for him. He will have a workout, full workout with Mel, and everyone knows, including me, to play for Mel was blood, sweat, and tears. Okay. And so he would have a, he would have a workout with Mel, and then he would take a break and pop up on my workout. And then push everyone in my workout to go because harder. he was of age to play for me. But he right. was so talented that he was able to play in two rounds. Wow. I don't, I don't know if everybody can notice, but they're getting, they're getting rowdy. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> so how long did, did Julio stay with you in your service? He played with me for a year before he actually transitioned back to Optimal for the rest of his career. Okay, okay. And I'm sure through the years, you, you sort of watched from afar and saw his growth. 
No, we kept in touch, and as he moved through the ranks and finally made it to the major leagues, then uh, we kind of lost touch right after that. Uh -huh. But I was always proud to watch him play on television. And I tell everyone who's here that I knew him and how much of a class he was. So, <clears throat> being that you're such a foundational player, you know, in the lives of so many young men, and, and grown, like, these are grown men now, you know, how, does that give you a sense of fulfillment? Because I, I'm sure you love the sport, but to see these guys take their game to the next level has to be the best feeling ever. But the thing is that this is like growing a garden. You plant the seeds and you water them, you work, you work the plants and you crop them, and then you see them grow. Right. And you see them grow, and sometimes for centuries. Right. You know, these guys are now grown, they have their own families, uh -huh. and in many ways, I'm so proud to see that they are here to pay, to pay tribute to um, Bolivar, because he was kind of the glue that kept each team that he played on, he kept it, kept it together. And for me to see that these players are here paying tribute to the organization, I mean, the work that they put in is reflective in their lives. Right. And the only thing that I wish now is that they will continue to do these things and get together, not in a sad situation, but that they will come around and give give of themselves at least uh, you know small advice here, uh, a session about you know just talk to the new players like because that's just lacking out there. Young players don't have anyone that they can really relate to that's close to the and that has been through the war. Right. And this organization has had uh, a tremendous impact based on major league baseball all the way down to college trains and all the way down to high school. I remember when I was there and I'm trying that's my effort now. My efforts to try to bring the organization back to national ranks. It's gonna take some work, but I'm up to it and I'm really an agent. So I'm just wish that I can that they can join me in the journey and get wow. the players uh, behind it, behind it, and get the few, you know, get the future players for them to feel the love, to feel the kind of integrity, the kind of character that it takes to be a new service. It, you know, new service over the, I think over the last, I don't know, uh, year, I've been hearing more and more about new service doing the show. Um, and interacting with uh, JJ, with uh, Luis Lopez, uh, Frank Rodriguez, and, and these guys, and they speak about it so as, a, as so much of an impact that it had on their lives. The great Luis Lopez, right there. Um, you know, it's a shame that you know more people don't start to get behind it and, and, and contribute because this is this is changing people's lives for real. You know. Well, it changed my life. When I came to New service, I grew up in Hell's Kitchen, okay. and a lot of my friends had already started in different countries. They had different interests. Right. They were great athletes, but that wasn't the main purpose. Okay. Coming to New service kept me away from that element, <laughs> and surely he pointed me in a little direction. Um, the least that I can say is that I've been up for twice, and then I came back. And I became a co-author teacher. And it's not everyone that can last 35 years in New York City Public <laughs> No. And I, I, I lasted 35. I, won, I retired for about a year and a half and I went back. Okay. And I'm impacting life. And I never stopped coaching. And again, uh, my life is to serve. Right. I doubt very much that if I didn't come to you, sir, that I would have lasted as long and I would have done, had the impact that I had in so many young lives with men and women right. to this day. Right. All right. Before you go, I want you to, I want you to speak into the mic. Let everybody know your name and the organization you're working with and where they can find you if they want to help or contribute. Yeah, the name is Richard Corbo, and I'm in charge of Youth Service League now. You can reach me at 201-220-0412. You can reach me at Richard Rich. 
214 at AOL.com or our corporate at schools.nyc.gov. And you can really get behind the purpose. We are really bringing your service back in the map. And we will, pre we will prevent it. Yes, we will. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Richard Corbel, uh just bringing, oh man, you hear this? The impact that this man has had on so many lives. I'm going to let Mr. Corbel come out. We're going to have our next guest in a second. All right? Thank you so much, Mr. Corbel. Thank you. Don't worry about that. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, who's going next? Uh, Andre. Andre? I guess it's you, right? I guess it's you, right? This is, this is for him. I saw you. I was like, I know this big motherfucker. He had the restaurants. that no, 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 I know. Like, when you saw the picture, I was laughing. I was like, oh, I remember this dude. All right, wait up. Headphones here. Y entonces, please, Sally, make sure that you close it to the mic, right? Your mic. 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 Your Paul Hamilton Tiger drafted. Don't sleep on Andre Arias. <laughs> He'll move some furniture too if you need it. My brother. Welcome to the set. Hey, gracias, gracias, hermano. Gracias por tenerme aquí. Un placer. He's speaking on the behalf of his family. Hey, hey, segundito ahí, que se está muy duro aquí. Estamos en vivo. Guys, slow it down, please, your life. Okay. Señores, si ustedes me ven un ojo hinchado por aquí, ¿cómo que está? Right here? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I got hit by baseball, bro. Yeah? I was training my son and no, I got no. forget about it. Your wife says she slapped you around for coming over here. Quiero darle la gracia a Sally. Tremendo, tremendo show que tienen aquí estos muchachos. Gracias al Todo Poderoso que están todos aquí hoy. Muchos peloteros de Youth Service, de los Bonnies, eh, compañeros de high school, celebrando la vida de Julio Lugo, nuestro hermano que mucha gloria nos dio. Alabado donde quiera que esté, Señor, por tanta gloria que ese hombre nos dio. Y hoy es un día para celebrar la vida de esa leyenda, grande liga de varios equipos. Jugó con los Houston de Seattle, jugó con Bozo, Tampa Bay, Aquí está la Orioles, vida, Dodgers, yeah. Braves, eh, Atlanta. Para mí Julio fue una inspiración, fue un pelotero que siempre, este, nunca se rindió, fue un pelotero que siempre le daba ánimo. Eh, me recuerdo que estábamos jugando un juego de high school, y el coach Apacela decidió de poner a Julio de capitán. Pero Julio siempre era un problema. Porque el coach decía, este Julio, nos vamos a las 2.50 en la guagua. Y Julio decía, coach, yo llego en un carro. Y, Julio, y siempre el coach Apacela decía, André, Julio seguro que va a llegar. Le digo, coach, va a llegar, va a llegar. Empezó el juego y estaban abajo 3 a 0 y Julio no había llegado. Y cuando Julio llega, encontró la base llena y el coach decide entrar a Julio y el pitch estaba 3 y 0. Y Julio mira al coach a Pacela y le da el take, take sign. <laughs> ¿Y qué tú crees que hizo Julio? Green light. <laughs> Green light, señores. Julio la sacó. Y fueron momentos inolvidables. Fueron momentos que eh, todavía hoy lo estamos recordando como un hermano, como uno de, los, uno de los de nosotros. Y quiero... Quiero aprovechar este momento. Este fue uno de los últimos mensajes que él me envió. Y... 
el mensaje dice, si algún día mis hijos verán fotografía y preguntarán quiénes son esa persona, entonces yo responde, entonces yo responderé, esos fueron mis amigos y con ellos fue con quienes yo pasé el mejor momento de mi vida. El tiempo pasa demasiado rápido y algún día llegará a esa realidad. Espero que nunca llegue a decir fueron, si no son mis amigos, los que no tienen comparación con nadie. Amigo que un día conocí en mi juventud y duraron para toda la vida. Hoy está vivo y nadie está a tu lado. Y si mañana muere, muchos estarán a tu lado. Hoy vives. No, no. Hoy vives y nadie te da un abrazo. Y si mañana muere, quiere soltarte. Hoy está vivo y nadie te regala una rosa. Pero si mañana muere, te regalan rosas y coronas. Hoy nadie te toma en cuenta, pero cuando mueras será popular por todo un día, colocando fotos de ti en tus redes sociales diciendo que te quiero mucho, que, te, que tú eres especial. Hoy está vivo y todo te lo y todo te hacen llorar. Si mañana muere, todo te lloran. Esas fueron las palabras de Julio, señores. En conclusión, él no quiso decir que si tú estás vivo, hoy quiere que todo el mundo le dé un abrazo. Él, tra, él trajo a nuestro mundo mucha energía, mucha positividad. Y él siempre quiso que todos trabajaran duro para asegurar el futuro. Eh, bendiciones para todos. Un placer estar aquí en conmemoración, celebrando la vida de Julio Lugo, mi hermano. Un día nos veremos. Te quiero, te amo, mi hermano. Ya tú sabes. Yo soy mi brother. Thank you. Listen, everybody, this is the ring. Julio Lugo's ring right here. Championship ring. World Series baseball sign. Bunch of players, man. Ya tú sabes. Bendiciones para todos. Yo. 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 DJ, we ain't playing. They want to tell stories over there. Watch the stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the set. This man strikes fear in a lot of these guys when they won the field. <laughs> Coach. Dennis DJ Oaks, welcome to the What's up, Sonny? How you doing, buddy? Good, good to see you. Talk to me about coaching Julio Lugo uh, when you have the opportunity. So, here's my greatest Julio Lugo story and why I have so much respect for him. So, Julio's 17 years old. I'm coaching for the first time in youth service with Richard Coburn, but we got the 15 and 16 year old team. So Julio comes down, and man, this kid was just electric. Right? He's running, he's throwing the crack out of the ball. I mean, he's, he's, his range was, was unlimited. And when I, I turned to Cobo and I said, there's no way this kid's 16. No way. Right. No way. So check that Dominican uh yeah, ain't no way. Ain't no way. <laughs> so so we got him, and you know, I'm kind of I'm a little heavy now, but back in the day I was a little bit physically intimidating. So we got him hemmed up in the corner. We're like, yo, bro, you 16 or what? You 16. So finally he cried. And we just walked him right over to Mel and we said, Mel. This kid needs to be on your team. I don't care how big your roster is. He needs to be on your team. And he would he he Mel took a look at him and fell in love with him and the rest is history. Yeah, man. Mel no, um Julio was uh he was electric, that was for sure. Big E, my brother, what's going on? He was electric. He was electric. He uh he uh you know and like I said, he's always smiling, always ready to go. Yep. Uh, and the other thing that I love about Julio, and then I don't know if somebody else is going to ready to talk, his perseverance and his determination to get to where he wanted to be was, you know, was unmatched, right? So even when he played for U-Service, there was always a shortstop better than him. 
But, you know, Julio shouldn't be playing short. He always plays second. Yes. But Julio's heart was always to be a shortstop. So finally he leaves Brooklyn. He goes to Connors or wherever he went to Connors. And he's playing shortstop. He's making a name for himself. Yeah. He's doing his thing. So he gets drafted. He goes into the minor leagues. He's with the Astros. And he makes it to the majors. And all you ever heard about was there's someone better than Julio coming up. Yeah. But no one ever took the guy out. Yeah. He always, once he got short, that was it. He played short. So he ends up going to Tampa and then makes it to the Red Sox. And even in those days that he's with the Red Sox, they're talking about how inefficient he is, right. how they got another guy. But guess what? Every time you looked up, we got Julio Lugo. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, and that's the that's the type of determination and the perseverance when when the whole world's against you, you're still able to rise over the situation. That's that's the one of the things that I loved about Julio, man. He was just an amazing guy. No, for sure. That Julio was a guy that um, he was a hard worker. Definitely was going to outwork the next person. Yeah. And it's funny, he played second base with us actually in high school, like you said, in, in you know, whatever service or whatever. He was a second baseman. And when he made it as a shortstop, it did kind of puzzle me like, wow, Julio was playing shortstop, but he was like second baseman with, you know, as far as we knew him. But that just shows to the strength of his character. Yep. It doesn't matter how many people. So, um, and you know, you just think about it. If he really conceded and played second, how great his career could actually be. Yeah. But he wanted to be a and You know, it's funny. He came up with the Astros, and I always said maybe Craig Biggio moved him over to second to short. <laughs> you know, because he's like, there's a faster way to the pros. It took a Hall of Famer. Yeah. But all right, Dennis, DJ, man, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. All the love for sure. Thank you, brother. Uh, Rob Bass. They want the whole American in there. Here I go. Alabama. Alabama. Rob just finished uh, working his construction job. Uh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, he's a Bonnie for life. He's a Bonnie for life, all right? Cut that out. North Face. Listen, my brother Rob, how was the game today? The game was terrible. Yeah, right? Giants suck. I mean, I'm, I'm so disappointed in the Giants right now. I mean, you know, when you draft a quarterback and it doesn't work out, you set your organization back at least five, six years now. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, they, uh, I, was, I was hearing... Uh, something the other day about them, like when they drafted Saquon and how they could have got Jonathan Taylor later and some other. It's tough, like you said, it sets the team back. But uh, you know, I'm gonna worry about that soon. My man, Rogers, uh, but uh, anyway, we're here for Julio, man. Uh, you know, you guys came up here. You know, like I was saying earlier, you know, we have gentlemen from the Bronx, uh, Staten Island. But we got you from Louisiana. We got guys from, uh, you know, Florida that came up. And this, you know, it's, 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 it's a terrible situation that we met here, but it's also something that we remember to have the good times. You know, so tell me some about the good times with Julio that you've had. Well, I mean, the first thing is, you know, when we talk about Julio, I mean, it, it is sad that we're able to uh, have a situation that brings us together both ways. Um, but you have to understand that Julio was the first of all. You know, he was the first to come from where we were to be able to, uh, I mean, in our profession, to be able to be great, to be able to succeed at the highest level, to be able to win a, a World Series. You know, John Rodriguez did the same thing. And so that's special. And, uh, and we lost him. It was just tough. It was, it was cool. Uh, you know, I couldn't believe that uh, someone so special, so kind, um, so original, you know, that what was taken from us. But my grandmother said that uh, the best usually leave early, you know, uh, the best of us usually leave early. And he was definitely everything that was great. As far as stories go, uh, Johnstown is, is, is the epitome of his transformation as a baseball player. 
Uh, for people that don't know Julio in the beginning, Julio was learning the game. He was always athletic and always had great ability. He was always able to to run really fast. He had a good arm. He, you know, um, he worked on his hitting. He could feel. You know, he could do great things. You always knew he had the ability to be great. But it wasn't. It wasn't. The transformation came in Johnstown, and uh, for him to grab Johnstown by the horns and and uh, succeed and become the MVP of that tournament and, and, and parlay that into a great college career and, and eventually a great professional career and great professional post career. You know, a lot of people want to be just a professional player. And I think that um, he knew early on that his life was, was, was way more than that. I think that he knew with what his representation, what his representation of uh, of his family was, you know, what what his role was, and to be able to be uh, an, uh, a stature in, in the MLB community, in the Dominican community, in the youth service community, in our lives, you know, we will always be great and thankful that, that we were able to know a, a person like him. No, for sure. I, uh, you know, I was talking to Mr. Ogan a couple of times here that uh, I started to write something down. Uh, to speak of my experience with him, and I just couldn't because I was like getting emotional about it and stuff. And I was like, I'm not gonna be able to read this, right? You know, so he's touched our lives in that way that it's, it's just a genuine way of the person that never switched up, with right? Who is this guy you got on the show? Who is this? I'm it's that guy, guy. <laughs> Mr. All American, baby, yeah, buddy. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, 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 it's my guy right here. This guy That's right, right here. And, and belated no, birthday uh, to my guy. Something with the background. They say in the background, you can't understand. Say what? Say what? Something with the background. Super loud in the background is saying here. Yeah, it's these guys. Yeah, it's a bunch of drunk baseball players in here. Got a bunch of drunk baseball players. Hey, hey, hey. hey. We're trying to have a nice little uh, session with Julio. Yeah. So let's make it pop, right? If you're going to have a great time and talk to your people, just stay away from this area right here. So slide down. Little we little can hear the bochincha. Slide, slide down. Slide, slide down. down. That was a coach voice. Get your fucking moment and sit down. Buddy. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, that's not going to work. No, I We already said it's like 10 times. It was good. They're like, fuck your life. <laughs> Everything that you that just, that just said is not going to yeah. happen. But, um, everybody's fired up. Yeah, man. Uh, we, you know, like you said, we, we, uh, we're thankful to not have, we don't have them in our lives. Uh, you know, like we said, like grandma said, the good die young sometimes and they get us out, you know, they take them away from us too soon. Yeah. You know, but uh, we keep moving forward. You know, we live through them and, uh, you know, we got to do this. Like I said, we got to try to figure something out where we could get it all together uh, once a year, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think what, what brings everybody together is the fact that Julio was taken so early. You know, when, when Julio was taken so early from us and he was part of that generation of us, he's the first one that, that's gone from that spot. Right. So every time I look at my championship pitcher in Johnstown, there's one missing. Right. You know, and, and with that person missing, it makes you value all the other persons that's on that team. Not only on that team, but all the people that have blessed you during the baseball your baseball life or your, your life in general. So there's you, you know, there's yeah. there's several others. There's, there's people that I haven't seen here in over a decade. Yeah. You know, and it's sad on why we're together, but we understand that from this moment, this is gonna propel us to always be together, to right. always make sure that nobody's gonna fall by the wayside without knowing that they're loved, knowing that they've come from from hardship to greatness, you know. Uh, now we sit champagne on Thursday. You know? And that's what we're trying to do as a group, you know? For sure. All uh, right, my bro Rob. Love you, brother. Have a safe trip back. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to the fans. Same to you. Same to you. you know. Anything you want to say to everybody before we go? Um, what I want to say to everybody is that I love everybody. Uh, I want to say that, you know, take care of your families. Always know that. Uh, tomorrow's not promised. And if there's anything that they can do, they got a family to count on. I'm a bro. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Rob Vass. Rob Vass, everybody! Rob Vass, everybody! Oh, oh! Yeah.
to speak to a Brooklyn legend. And this guy's been on the show. Uh-huh, Paul Nelson. This guy's been on the show before two times. And today he's here to, to pay homage um, and show his respects to a dear friend, Julio Lugo. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Louis Lopez. My brother. You, you, you guys don't understand what it is to meet somebody digitally and then meet them in person. It's just a whole different animal because this guy's energy is fucking crazy. <laughs> but I appreciate you coming out, man. I really do. Um, so what are some of, or not even, not some. Let's start with something simple. What was the first interaction that you can remember having with, with Julio? And, and what was that like? Um, the first interaction, uh, you know, as you know, the new service is it's a brotherhood. Yes, it is. It's a brotherhood. You know, I uh, I joined the new service a little bit later, but they accepted me with open arms. And, um, you know, Julio was always, as you saw him when he played, he was always smiling, high spirited guy, always had a lot of energy. Um, and that's what he brought to the table, that's what he brought to our team. Um, you know, he was a leader by example. And, uh, you know, like I said, everybody on that team. If you can see the group that's here tonight, we continue to have our conversations like we ain't missing a beat. Yeah, it's important. I think um, when you don't see somebody for a long time and you, you see each other and you pick up like it was yesterday, that says a lot about your connection, right? For sure. And, and, and tonight, as I worked the room and, and was speaking to a lot of the guys, listening to their conversations and how they're moving with each other, it seems like that kind of you know spirit between them, right? So as I'm watching you guys, I'm sure it's been long times, long periods of times that you don't see each other. But as soon as you float and you come in each other's presence, it's like you just saw each other yesterday, you know? I'll tell you right now, the group that's here, though, we do a good job of keeping together and touching each other, whether it be on the Internet, phone calls, text messages, whatever. Um, we do, especially all this stuff that's been happening in our world lately. Right. And once this pandemic hit, we realized how life, you know, how short life is. Yeah. It's very short. You know, anything could possibly happen, you know, just like we lost our brother Julio. You know, that was all of a sudden. Yeah. You know, I read it and I, I didn't know if it was false news or yeah. what. Yeah. You know, because I knew how he always took care of himself. And, uh, you know, like I tell the guys, and they always tell me, they're like, Lou, yo, when it's your time, it's your time. Yeah. You could be the guy that's the best shape, whatever. But just uh, when he comes calling, yeah. it's our time. I think that people really don't understand it until it happens. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, life is, is, is a, a fleeting thing. And the, the sad part about it is that we don't live every day like we should, right? So to see you guys in this moment, you know, it's heartbreaking in a way because, again, we shouldn't see each other in this moment. We should be able to live and connect with each other along that path and share those times. Um, and I think that people uh, should take the time out, especially now, to say, hey, you know what? All right, I'm going to plant my flag. And from this moment forward, I'm going to live every day like it's my last. 100%. You know? Um, yeah, 100%. You know, and uh, the other thing that I heard was I heard Shaq said the other day, you know, um, people that you have a grudge with, people that you're upset with, whatever, you haven't spoken to somebody in a long time, reach out to them. Reach out to them. Because you don't want to take that with you. You know what I'm saying? You want to be a person that you know everybody remembers you as a good person. Yeah. And that's what I try to instill in all my players. 
you want to be known as a good person before that a good a good ball player. Yeah. You know, good teammate, respectful, all that stuff. Um, you gotta have that. You know, my, I always I, the other day I posted about honesty, loyalty, trust, respect. Those four words for me are huge. Right. And I try to live by them. As I go out there, that's what I try to teach to my own kids right. as well. You know, uh, because I think we need to get back to that. The roots. Yeah, the roots, because we're losing that. And it all starts at the home. Definitely. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. You know, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I'm going to say this one more time so you can sort of get the message. I met this man digitally. We were online. We interviewed him. He gave us his time. We spoke in depth about his experience and what it was like for him to come up through the ranks. Um, his Everything you could think of that he went through, he laid it out in that interview. And for somebody like Louis, you know, and, and JJ, who they are, exactly who they are comes through, right? But now that I'm sitting across from him, it's the same thing. And and I, I not only respect him for that, but I admire him because this guy walks with such integrity. And you today you just do not find that. You know what I'm saying? And to be a leader of young men and bringing those principles to the table, you know, this gentleman, you know, men like this need to be commended and they need to be saluted. You know what I'm saying? And Louis is doing just that. He's laying the groundwork for the future of these ball players. Whether they they choose to play ball or they do something else, those foundational tenets that you're laying and instilling in them, that's going to carry with them through life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we're using baseball to teach them life lessons. And my main thing, what I always try to do is, I already know that they're good ball players. I want to learn about you now. Right. About what you do outside of baseball. What, who's your family? You know, your parents' name. What do they do for a living? And I think that's when you're a coach. You're a very good coach. You learn about your players on the off the field. Right. Not on. It's easy to find out about on the field. On the field. Because everybody's there for the same reason. Of course. So you got to make it your point to learn about that person as a person. Off the field. How they're doing in school. What are they struggling with? You know, maybe you can help them with the school work as well. Right. You know, just all little different things like that because it all adds up in the long run. See, what what Louis laying down, <laughs> and I hope everybody. You know, hope, let me let me quiet the crowd. Yo, I'm talking to a legend here, bro. Come on, you fucking me up. <laughs> you hear the disrespect in this place? <laughs> That's what makes the show so wonderful. I think what Louis is doing. You know, in creating this environment for these guys to understand that it's more than baseball, that this is something for them, as he said, life lessons that they have to carry with them. And I think that people are going to start to understand and recognize when they see one of Louis Lopez's guys come out of camp, because he's not just going to be a ball player. He's going to be a man. He's going to have respect, integrity, loyalty, honesty. He's going to have all these things that Louis is making sure that he puts in them. And a lot of coaches, as you said, they don't do that. You know, oh, you're talented. You can hit. You can run. You can. All right, cool. After that, se acabó. Give me the next guy. Yeah, and he's turning them out, and that's it. What he's doing is building men beyond players, and that, dude, that's that's the kind of work that we need, especially now in this environment. You know, better. Eventually, I want them to be like this. Exactly. Like get together. Good reasons, uh, not just when we're losing. A loved one. Right. We want to get together. You know, when people are here, give them their flowers while they're here. That's a fact. This guy's amazing. <laughs> All right. Now, let, let's talk about Julio. Why don't you tell the audience uh, what kind of player and person Julio was in, in your in your mind and your understanding? Julio, well, the first thing is he's a catalyst. He was a team player. He always tried to get on base any way he could. Uh, he was a table setter for us, especially me, hitting in the middle of the water. I used to love having guys like that hit in front of me. He would steal bases. Any way he could help his team to win, he did it. Mm. 
then you talk about him defensively. It was unbelievable to some of the plays that he made. All that stuff is just very athletic. Athletic, had speed, straight arm. He understood what type of player he was. And that's what a lot of our players that we try to teach them now. You have to understand what type of player you are, a person. If you're not a home run hitter, don't try to be a home run hitter. Understand what you're doing with your body, what God gave you, and run with that. Wow. So, needless to say, he was a dirty uniform guy. All the time. All the time. Something that we, we definitely spoke a lot about when we interviewed Louie was guys today don't have dirty uniforms. No, they're afraid to die. They're afraid to get hurt or something. I mean, I don't know what it is. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, I mess around, and you know, and a lot of the kids, you know, they get upset when I come out with the S word. I tell them, you're in soft. As mm. soon as they hear that, that's when they change their attitude. I said, so why did you have to get to that point? Right. You should already have that instilled in you. You don't want to be called that. No. You don't want to be called that. Go out there hard all the time because you don't know when it's going to be the last day you put on the uniform. Mm. And, and that's exactly what we're talking about now. These guys need to understand the opportunities that they're being afforded and play like it's their last game. You know, I, I playing with Selly, I broke my fibula and tibula in a playoff game. And I was like, man, I'm never going to play again. And that's exactly what happened. And I missed it terribly. But to these young guys that are out there, you know, the way the world is, they don't they don't have a grasp on that. And it's important that a leader like yourself is driving that home to them. You know what I'm saying? This guy, I'm, I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, this person sitting next to me, man, I, I couldn't I couldn't tell you enough about him. You know, and, and as you can hear the way he speaks, and not only that, but what's important to him that he's imparting to these gentlemen. You you can't you can't buy that. That's something that you're raised with. And and Louis, from the day that we first spoke, has always laid those things on the line and made those an important item. Because he understands in order for a player to be the best that he can be, those things have to be in the mix. Right? And not only that, he's a dad. He's raising his children that way. So it's a it's a wonderful thing, man. Louis, before I go. Tell everybody about your organization and what you're doing now. Okay, well now um we had a big merger come up uh, just yeah. recently, and it was another New York City legend. Yes, sir. I know Frank Rodriguez and myself. We partnered up. He had his organization called 33 Rods, and my organization was called the New York Nighthawks. Yes, sir. So we partnered up, and now we're called the 33 Hawks. And uh, we're trying to trying to make sure that we uh, build a legacy. We want to help kids from all over the area, not only in New York City, but in the tri-state area. We want to come. We're going to take them to them tournaments, and we're going to be going out there, putting them in front of the right people, and not blowing the smoke to them or their parents. Mm because there's too much of that going on with a lot of organizations out there. And the other thing is we're the type of organization that we don't have to steal players. Nope. The players come to us. Mind you, a lot of people are coming trying to steal our players. And I always say, I wonder why. We must be doing something right. That's a fact. That's a fact. Tell everybody where they can find the organization. Okay, well, the organization, you know, you have my email address is uh, Luis Lopez at nynighthawks.com. And uh, you can hit me up there. I can give you any type of information you need. We're still looking for players. And just like I told Frank, we're starting off small, but we have big expectations. That's a fact. So we have two teams right now. One's a 15U team, and the other team is an 18U. But we have 16 all the way to 18 on that one group, which is our showcase team. So right now we're still looking for ages. But if you're out there, kids, from 14 through 18, Hit us up, especially uh, we're looking for more pitching as well. We can never have a lot of pitching. Um, we go to a lot of events, uh, but we go to the right events. I thought we're just going out there to different vacations or to waste the parents' money. That's a fact. Ladies and gentlemen, the legend, the legendary, the astute, the honorable Mr. Louis Lopez. Brother. Man, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm gonna have to come out and call a game with this guy because he's he's fucking amazing. I can't tell you the energy for real. I really love this guy. We're gonna come right back with another with another legend. 
we're going to step to the side and, and, and let somebody else come sit at the table, all right? We'll be right back. Bueno, let's not destroy this. I'll hold this for you. Make sure you back it. I'm going to put that over here. I'll get that. I'll give it to you on this side. I'll get that from over there. Make sure we straighten it. We can be set up we got here. There you go. W, 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 however you want it. Green Bay wins. Green Bay wins. I like it. I like it. Go for two. For what? Go for two. You don't give Rodgers that chance. It is what it is. Yeah. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to close this up because this is uh, guys are drunk. Alito, don't make me bring the college roommate in. Don't make me bring the college roommate in. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, do you see what's happening in this place? I can't yeah. wait to see the playback. Oh, man. Shit show. <laughs> Shit show. All right. So, so, so let me explain really quickly how this all came to be. Uh, my brother, my partner here, who was part of uh, Julio's life, they were friends. Um, we were, he was roped, roped into doing the, the, the memorial. We were in this location. He also set that up. And then when I got here, we were just running and gunning. So it just made it a little, that's why you see shit hanging yeah, everywhere. Back is under construction. Alexi, take care, yeah. buddy. Bye -bye. Um, but the energy in the room and the guys that we have in the room, man, it's just, it's amazing. You can't beat it, you know? Uh, JJ, Louie, um, uh, seeing Ramana, Dom, like, these guys are just amazing. So, right now, I'm going to see if we can play a piece of this. Hold on. Because we got Papa pulling up on us like 5 0. <laughs> fucking parrot on the fucking shoulder. <laughs> so, basically, we have a tribute video. Um, that I had spliced last night. Dude, I was up to 11 something at night. Okay, hey, don't look at me. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, but the thing about it is, is we can't, I can't get the, the drive here. The video's in there. 
I'm, I'm going to see if I can play uh, a part of this video. But, of course, this is it's not recognizing the drive. Uh, Apple Pie. Mira, ahí está. All right, now let's see if we can get this to go. So if we can get this to go, we're going to play a clip. And again, if we can get it to go. Because it seems like you need that hard drive. Oh, <laughs> as you can tell, my partner, Mrs. Sasong, has been having a few <laughs> more than a few, I think. He's having, <laughs> yo, were you having a rum raisin ice cream? Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, this shit is not fucking working. <laughs> uh, open another application. All right. Uh, up, 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 up. Quick time. Let's try quick time. Huh? Okay. So let's try it now. Why is it in fucking ejected? Bum, 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 One more again. Yo, semi messed it up. <laughs> All right. This is. Something tells me. Uh, all right, all right, all right, wait, 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 wait. Housing, you can relocate the items. It's not showing it. It's not being recognized. Let me see if the drivers in here. Nope. Nah. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we're gonna do is. I'm gonna upload the tribute video to the page so that everybody can see it because we can't seem to have the drive recognized right now. So what I'm gonna do is the clips that I've cut up, I'll add, but I'm gonna add the, the full length tribute video to our page in its entirety for everybody to see. All right? That's good. All right, all right. Don't hit him, Papo. Don't hit him. And, and Don't I, hit him. <laughs> I'm here with that. And, and I'll tag you in it so that you can share with other people and everything, all right? Yep. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, another gentleman that was instrumental in, in putting this together. Peek your head in here, bro. Look at the camera. Wait, wait, there you go. Look, look at the camera. There we go. All right. This gentleman was instrumental working alongside my partner, Mr. Sassong, and making this tribute happen. As you can hear, we have everybody in the building. They're having a great time remembering Mr. Julio Lugo, paying their respects and showing each other love. So, Sally, I think we're, we're out of here. Everybody have a safe Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. We're going to talk to you up and we talk to you before that. But, uh, yo, we know you like it anyway. Subscribe to the channel. <laughs> Anybody new watching this on your phones in here, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna snatch phones up and just start pressing like and subscribe. All right? Any words? Yeah, we out of here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we out of here, people. Oh, look at, look at, you see this? Ignore, motherfucker. <laughs>